Well, hello, 1P. We're back, and we're talking about determining values in a linear relation. So our goal today, I can use my knowledge of linear relations and solving equations to solve problems. So determining value in a linear relation, we're going to do this by example, and I'm going to work through it. So we're going to take a look at this one first. A rental car costs $50 per day plus 20 cents for each kilometer it is driven. What is the dependent variable? So First of all, what are the variables? What are we being asked in here? Well, a rental car costs $50 per day and 20 cents for each kilometer driven. So we have something about kilometers driven. So kilometers driven. And we have something about cost. So that looks like the two different things that are going on here. We've got kilometers driven and we've got cost. So does cost depend on kilometers driven? Um, where the more you drive, the more it costs, or does the kilometers driven depend on cost? Okay, so which is what you set, which is what you know, and which is what you have to figure out? That's what we're looking for. The dependent variable is the one that we have to figure out. So here, cost is something we don't know. When we look down at the odometer, we know how far we've gone. We know the kilometers driven. That's something that's set. That's something we know, and we have to figure out the cost. So the cost is our dependent variable, which means that our number of kilometers must be independent. independent. Okay. So now we have to actually figure these things out. So this says that it costs $50 per day. So if we drive no kilometers, it's still going to cost us $50. So that means we're dealing with a partial variation situation here. It does not start at 0, 0. It starts at 0, 50. There is a fixed cost. Now, how about the cost for 100 kilometers? Well, that $50 doesn't change. We still have that $50. So I'm going to do a little bit of figuring over here. I have 20 cents per kilometer. So it's 20 cents, and I have to multiply that by the number of kilometers we drive. So 0 0.2, 20 cents, times 100 is $20. So it's going to cost me $20 for those 100 kilometers. But I still have this $50 to add on to. So I have to do this $20 on top of that 50, which is 70. Now how about 200 kilometers? Well, if this was 200, 0.2 times 200, and I do my little figuring over here, 0.2 times 200, you can plug that into the calculator if you want, it's $40. So I, if I drive 200 kilometers, I have to pay $40 plus this $50 cost per day. Now that $50 cost per day doesn't change no matter how far I drive the car. It's still $50. So $50 plus this 40 for the 200 kilometers driven is $90. Now by now, hopefully we've found a pattern. First of all, what we've got here is going up by 100s. So this is going to be 300. 400 and 500. And as long as this is going up at a constant rate, um, we know this is linear because there's a fixed cost and then this is the a rate of change. That's a rock. Okay. Um, what's going on here? Well, it's going up by $20 for every 100 kilometers. So we can just follow that pattern up and this becomes 110, 130, and $150. Now, let's put that on this graph, which is already nicely labeled for you. Kablam! There it is. All there already. Isn't that magical? Um, okay, so what is this asking now? It said, uh, make a table of values up to a thousand kilometers. Um, we didn't go up to a thousand because we just followed the pattern. Uh, this goes up to a thousand though, and if we take a look, we've got the graph up to a thousand, and it says graph this relationship. So we've got it graphed up to a thousand. We could have added the rest of them on here, but I'm not going to bother. Okay. Uh, write an equation to model the relationship. C is the cost, and N is the number of kilometers. So what we're figuring out is the cost. So we say, okay, we've got cost, 
and that cost is going to be fifty dollars no matter what. Um, but we have to add in twenty cents. The problem is we don't know if we're adding one twenty cents or two twenty cents or three twenty cents because we don't know how many kilometers we've driven. So we have to put in a placeholder here to multiply this point two by the number of kilometers driven so that this thing here represents the cost for the kilometers and this is our fixed value. So the cost per kilometers, cost for kilometers driven um, is the changing part. Okay, so 50 plus 0.2n and notice that this is the fixed value and this 0.2 in here is our rate of change. So the rate of change is with the variable and we saw that in the last lesson too. Okay, determine the rental fee for 40 kilometers driven using the equation. Now when I say using the equation I mean using the equation. The equation that you found. C equals 50 plus 0.2n. Now what is this 45 here? What is this number that I've given you? Well that looks like number of kilometers and remember our n was the number of kilometers so that 45 actually goes in place of the n. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to write down 50 plus 0 0.2 and we're going to put that 45 in there. Now remember your order of operations. Bedmas applies here. I have to do this multiplication before I do this addition. So I'm going to write down the 50 plus and then we need 0.2 times 45. 0.2 times 45 and that's 9. So I have to add on $9. So the cost is 59. Now since this is a word problem I say therefore it costs 40, er, 59, $59 to drive 45 kilometers. And again it says using the equation determine the maximum number of kilometers you could drive in a day if you wanted to keep your daily costs under a hundred dollars. So what have I given you? I have given you a hundred dollars which is cost. This is the C so let's write down our equation again. Cost equals 50 plus 0 0.2 N and now instead of cost I'm going to put in this hundred dollars. Now you have to remember this is going back to our first unit of the year. We have to know how to solve this equation. Well the first thing I have to do is get rid of this fifty dollars because I have to get n by itself. In order to get n by itself I first have to get this thing by itself. So in order to get that by itself I have to take away fifty. But if I take away fifty from this side I have to take away fifty from this side. So that tells me that I have fifty dollars is going to equal zero point two n. And that should make sense to you that if we're going to spend $100, I first have to take away the fixed cost to find out how much is left over for the number of kilometers I drive. So I have $50 to spend on the number of kilometers I drive. And that's what this says. Remember when we looked at it before, I said that 0.2 was the number of kilometers we drive. Now we divide both sides by 0.2 because that will cancel that out and then whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other. So I have to divide 50 by 0.2. 50 divided by 0.2 and that's 250. So 200, let's just take that color, 250 dollars or 250 kilometers I can drive for a hundred dollars. So you can go up to 250 kilometers for a hundred dollars. Now we're going to take a look at ooh, e ample to. Let's put a little x in there. Example two. Uh, the meal deal at Chicken Deluxe cost $26 plus an extra dollar fifty for every piece of extra chicken added to the bucket. Okay, so find an equation to represent the situation. We're not even going to 
graph this this time. We're going to go straight from this thing. What have I been given? Well, it tells me here that it costs $26. Um, and that's going to be the fixed cost. Because that doesn't matter how many extra pieces of chicken I buy. I'm always paying that $26. And then this $1.50 is going to be different depending on how many pieces of chicken. So one person could come in and get five pieces of chicken and they pay something different than the next person that comes in and gets 10 pieces of chicken. So we want to represent this situation. So we are going to have cost. Now look over here, I've got something in a bubble. When you determine the equation of a linear relation, you will always have two variables. So what are the two things here? Well, the two things that we're talking about are cost. So we're going to say cost equals capital C. And the other thing we have here that's floating around is, is the number of pieces of extra chicken. So we're going to say extra pieces uh, equals N. So we're going to let that equal N. So now cost equals the $26. It's going to be the same no matter what. And then we have to add on to that $1.50. But I don't know if I'm going to add one $1.50 because I don't know if I'm getting one piece of chicken or two pieces of chicken. If I get two pieces of chicken, I have to add $1.50 twice. If I get three pieces of chicken, I have to add $1.50 three times. If I get four pieces of chicken, I have to add that $1.50 four times. And notice I'm multiplying here because repeated addition is written as multiplication. So rather than putting an actual number in there, let's put an N in there to represent the number of extra pieces because I don't know what they are. So here's our equation. C equals 26 plus 150N. And notice that this 26, this is our fixed value. I'm going to call it FV. And this buck 50 here, that is our rate of change. How fast our price is changing. And it depends on the number of pieces. Our whole cost depends on the number of pieces. So now let's look at the extra. It's next one, it says, how much would it cost if you got eight extra pieces? So look at the thing I put in a bubble. I put it in a bubble for a reason. If I ask you to determine an answer using a linear equation, I will give you the value of one of those variables and ask you to solve for the other. So I've given you, this is the value I've given you. I've given you eight. Now is that for C or is that for N? Well, take a look. The next word says extra pieces and extra pieces was n. So I've given you the value for n. So now let's write this equation down. C equals 26 plus $1.50 times the number of extra pieces. So the number of extra pieces is 8. So I have to add $1.50 8 more times or just multiply $1.50 by 8. Now remember your order of operations. We have to do that $1.50 times 8 first, and that's going to be $12, and then when I add them together, I'm going to get um, $38. Okay, so the next one that we're going to look at, it says, how many extra pieces could you order if you have $50 to spend on supper? So let's write our equation down again. C equals $26 is our fixed rate plus $1.50 for each extra piece of chicken. Now, what is the information I've given you? $50. Now, is that a C or is that an N? Well, hopefully you recognize that as a cost, not a number of pieces of chicken. So we're going to put that where the C is. 50 equals 26 plus a buck 50 N. And now we have to take off the fixed cost from the cost from the total cost to see how much extra I have to spend on extra chicken. So 50 minus 26 is 24. So this is 24 equals $1.50 N. Now remember we divide both sides by $1.50 to get that N by itself. The $1.50s cancel over here so that I do have n completely by itself on this side. And then I have to do 24 divided by $1.50. So 24 divided by a buck 50 is 16.
So we could buy 16 extra pieces of chicken is what that says because that's what the N stands for N is extra pieces of chicken. Okay, last example. Emily had $95 in a piggy bank at home. Each day she took $3 out and didn't ever, not every, didn't ever put anything back in. Determine an equation, I'm putting extra letters in all over the place. Determine an equation using R for the amount remaining and D for the number of days she's been taking money out of the bank. Okay, so we're going to use R for the amount remaining. And when she started, she had $95. So that's the beginning. And she's taking $3 out. So we're going to subtract $3 because she took it out. But how many times do I subtract $3? Because she's taking out $3 every day. So I could subtract 3. Or if it happens for 2 days, I have to subtract 6. Or if it happens for 3 days, I have to subtract 9. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to put a D here representing the number of times we have to subtract that out. So now let's say, how much will she have after 12 days? Well, you have to decide. 12 days means that I have to put 12 in for D. So let me do that right now. So there we go. I plugged in the 12 for D and remember that this in here is an understood multiplication between those two variables. And so I do 3 times 12 is 36 and 95 minus 36 is 59. So she's got $59 remaining. How long before she only has $41 left? Well, what have we got here? $41 is an R. So I have to sub that $41 in where the R is in the equation because that's the amount remaining. So here we go. So it will take 18 days. Now the last one's a little bit of a trick question. How long will it take before her piggy bank is empty? Um, oops, that doesn't need to be there. Okay. Uh, empty. What have I given you? I've given you the word empty. There's no numbers here at all to plug into anything. All I've given you is the word empty. Well, the word empty should imply to you a number, and that number would be a zero, um, which means zero, and what is this? Her piggy bank is empty, so that's zero dollars. It also says how long. How long implies that I'm asking you for days. So I'm asking you for the D when R is 0. So 95 minus 3D means that I need to sub the 0 in where the R is. And I'm asking you to find the number of days. So here goes. Now the answer I get is 31.6 days, which means that on the last day, she's not going to have a full dollar, to, or the full $3 to take out. Um, she's going to have a little bit of money left, and she's going to probably have two dollars left in there. Um, so it actually is going to take 32 days. So therefore it will take 32 days but she won't get a full three dollars on the last day. And that ends this lesson.